and beat him and unfortunately the way it happened but full credit to Collins he did it the hard way and he gave us a wonderful four rounds the official line here right now is that Nigel Benn has retired yes I know we've told you this before but that's what Nigel Benn is telling us this time and until we're told different we have to believe that he will not be making a comeback Frank Warren who uh, promoted here tonight incidentally has said that he leaves the question of a rematch to settle any remaining arguments open for future debate so you just have to keep watching in the meantime, we'll bring you the action from earlier this evening and a big local hero here in Manchester, Steve Foster. A major title opportunity. Two titles uh, up uh, for grabs here tonight against Chris Pyatt, Adam Smith on two men who like to prepare for business rather differently. The former world champion is a dark, intense and secretive character. He works alone and underground, in the gym or at his other haunt, the snooker hall. He took the Commonwealth crowd amidst controversy from Kevin Kelly. All this in stark contrast to Steve Foster and his title win. The colourful Viking and his invaders have brought fun and excitement to the sport. Steve escapes to fish, but the Vikings are never far from port. There we do some hollering. Luckily they're not on there on a boat somewhere, doing a bit of rowing. We're expecting 47,000 Vikings because we think there's about three Normans coming. They won't scare me. I eat them at dinner time, Pirates. They won't be in the ring. Will Steve Foster frighten you? No, not at all. No, I'm not frightened by no man. I'm in the best shape of my life. I train very hard for six weeks. Uh, can't wait for the fight. The winner takes all. I mean, the winner goes on for the world title. This will be my 50th fight on July the 6th, and uh, I'm out for a win. But he's entering Viking territory. Hey, we're coming to take you, Chris Pyatt. Take you, Pyatt. Hey. There's no coming home. Popular lad, 35 years of age, Steve Foster, Chris Pyatt, a mere kid at the age of 33. Two titles on the line, we pick it up at the first bell with Glenn and Ian. Steve Foster, the 35-year-old in the black trunks, Chris Pyatt, the former WBO world middleweight champion in the white from Leicester. Foster, the hometown man. Foster's camp, I know, just a little bit worried that Pyatt might be dangerous early on here. Yes, well, Pyatt a good puncher, but he's also a very good stylist, good amateur on us. As you said, a great deal of title experience. So he's a real, you know, he's a classy boxer and he can punch a little bit. Foster, on the other hand, he's more of a brawler. He'll want to get close, he'll want to rough Pyatt up and try and get his punches in when he can. Good right hand with his back to the ropes by Pyatt in that exchange. Foster's come out breathing fire by the looks of it. Very pumped up for it. But he's been a real talisman for the boxing revival in Manchester, as this Steve Foster, and has also been spearheading an anti-drugs campaign in the city as well. Foster's fan club already in full voice. But of course they can't get in there with him. On paper there is a gap in class. Pyatt is the man with that extra edge of class, but he seems to be on the way down. And Foster, remarkably, seems to be on the way up at 35. So it's it's a fascinating one, Glenn. It really is, and that's that's the question mark. How much Pyatt wants this? We've seen he's got very good class in the past. But Foster, he's the one who's you know he's really full of it. He's enjoying his boxing. At the moment, he's had his, his best success in his latest fight, and he's, you know, he's really full of confidence. That's so with a couple of shots. Pyatt's knees appeared to buckle just for a moment there. I think he might have been off balance against the ropes more than anything. Yes, I think he just looked for a little bit of support from the ropes, and he just almost come through them there. Foster trying to make this a rough fight. This is what he's going to do. Try and keep Pyatt off balance. Pyatt, a good stylist who works behind the jam. Foster's just got to try and mess him about as much as he can. 
despite it's been looted for quite a time. It was going to appear on a couple of shows prior to this, but at last it's become reality tonight. Foster says, if I could win this one, I want a world title shot at my age. It's world title or bust. So he's got big, big plans, Foster. He's come a long way from being a journeyman. He's got, what is it, 13 defeats on his record. But not many of them lately. Well, he's certainly got the, the right attitude. And he has the, the right positive attitude in this fight. He's trying to force the fight here. about the fire that Foster will bring to his performance here. I think, Glenn, you got it right, really, with Pyatt when you asked, does he still have the desire and ambition? Yes, I think that's the, the real question. Well, we know Foster has the desire and ambition, but he hasn't got the, the skills that Pyatt has. But often that can that can be more if he's not fighting, if he, Pyatt hasn't got the desire. A lot of people thought Pyatt was a bit lucky when he regained the Commonwealth crown against Kevin Kelly of Australia in December. He had to get off the floor to do that. Wasn't at all convincing. So Foster may feel that Pyatt could be right for the taking. We'll see. Good solid jab there from Foster. With the, the sweat flying from Pyatt. back down at light middleweight these days he was a world champion wbo version at middle but he says this has always been his proper weight the 11 stone division he went to middleweight because it was where the money was and just trying to get through with that overcut he sees foster coming in with his head down and he just occasionally whipped the overcut hasn't landed yet but foster's pushing forward very hard it's hustle bustle brawling tactics in behind the jab from Foster when he can. It's a good left hook from Hyatt. It's better from Hyatt. Just jabbing, and John Coyle's not happy with something. Watch your use of the shoulder, he's saying to Foster. inside from Pyatt who covers up well just the suspicion that Pyatt's doing the cleaner work in this round right. yes he's having the, the better work on the retreat just starting to, to pick his punches more and he's just getting a little bit more time as Foster's coming in a little slower and he's just managing to land with these decent punches and Foster's obviously got it in his game plan to never take a backward step in this fight just walking on in and he'll hope to wear Pyatt down, sickening, erode away his resistance. Yes, you'd think that's got to be the best tactic from Foster. Push in, push in quick, use the angles, and try not to give Pyatt a second. And if Pyatt is, hasn't got the, the motivation, that will find it out. Roughing him up in close when he can, but in this round it hasn't really worked, not for my money anyway. First couple of minutes of the round, Pyatt was doing quite nicely on the counter. Take it, corners. Take it out. Take it, corners. Let's go. Round three. Third round. Chris Pyatt, who's been involved in his time in five World Championship contests. He won three of them and lost a couple. When he was just a kid fighting for the Commonwealth Games gold medal in Brisbane back in 1982, it seems a long time ago now, and here he is on the tail end of his pro career. still coming forward but you've got to watch here what he's able to affect when he does come forward 
Hyatt might be quite happy. Just looking to counter punch him on the way. Almost tripped over the ropes there, Chris Pyatt. Yes, I think Pyatt will like it if Foster's coming to him. He'll get more power into his punches as long as Foster isn't coming at him too hard and heavy. He'll, just, he'll need Foster just to come at him at a good pace, and that'll suit Pyatt. That's good punching again from Pyatt on the retreat. And again, the right uppercut. Foster grimaces and undeterred tries to walk Pyatt down again. Getting this right so far is finding counter punches and then stepping off to the side. It's as if he's rather warming to the task at the moment, isn't he, Pyatt? Yes, he's just getting his rhythm. He's starting to enjoy the fact that Foster's coming at him and he's just picking his punches, then going on a, a little walkabout and waiting for Foster to come at him again and picking more punches. just have to hope that he can walk through those counters and somehow the pressure will begin to tell at some point it might this will certainly it, it makes it hard for Pyatt because he's got to right. use a lot of energy both from his legs and his arms he's got to try and keep him off so it this is the right plan for Foster he's got to keep this pressure on and hope that in the long in the late stage of the fight Pyatt will start to wear down and then Foster can get to him that's good left hook, best shot yet from Foster. Got through with that one. Now that might be a breakthrough moment for Foster. Unfortunately for him, it comes right at the end of the round. He landed another left hook right on the bell. Second down. Bell four. Here's the fourth round. So far, both Glenn scorecard and my own saying the same thing. First round Foster, second and third to Pyatt. Pyatt in white but you knew that because he's got it written on the waistband. It'd be absolutely amazing if Foster could win this and then went on into a world title fight. The dream would carry on, but Pyatt has other ideas, but Foster's beginning to get through with these shots now. Yes, you just get the feeling this is really going to be a contest of determination here. It's Pyatt's having to fight in close. And Foster's coming up with answers with the left hook and the right hand. He just looked a bit unsteady on his legs for a moment, I thought, Pyatt then. As he was moving around back towards those ropes. I'll tell you what, this might be good. The heads coming dangerously close there, banging together. Well, Foster does tend to come in with his head down a bit at times. Right. And, uh, he has had cuts problems in the past. I'm sure he will have trained very hard for this fight, Foster. And um, he's going to have to use that and push, push and push all the time and try and really wear Pyatt down. Pyatt has come back pretty well to Foster's big end to the third and good start to the fourth. He's trying to mix them up better now, Ty, just on the back foot again, just picking his punches. But the pressure's good from Foster. Yes, he's walking on in there all the time, but... Pyatt has a look about him as if it's roughly what he expected and that's a good left hook from Pyatt who had his back to the ropes at the time and Foster wants to cover up for a moment. Head is clearing now but that was a good left hook and just occasionally Pyatt who has this classy repertoire does show good variety and that was a lovely punch, it really was. And again Foster puts the pressure on but 
think it's bringing the best out in Pai because Pai now he's having to stand with Foster. He's having to dip the knees and look for a bit of power because I think he feels he can't be pushed around the ring too much like this or he's going to tire. And Foster's hopes that Pyatt might be a shot fighter with very little left. Well, they look like uh, a bit of straw clutching again. They looked a bit rocky on his legs, Pyatt. It just looks a little bit unsteady with that long jab from Foster. Fifth round. And Pyatt is being forced to fight here at a very high tempo. Maybe a tempo that may not suit him entirely. He's, he's an amazing fighter, this Steve Foster, really. That was some performance he put up to win this title, this uh, IBF Intercontinental Championship, when he beat Bali Amati amid his home fans in a real rip-roaring night. We were there, small hall promotion. And here he is in front of around 20,000. Still in Manchester, in the 9X, all those fans are here, but they're not making quite as much racket because they're lost in the rest of the crowd. But Foster with big support. Tribute to his fitness and conditioning at the age of 35. This pace is setting. This really shows what he can do with determination. In his career, it is a real tribute to determination. Still bustling in, using the shoulder again. He's already been warned about that. Counterpunch right to the body from Pyatt. But is Pyatt going to be able to live with this for what is it another eight rounds yet wouldn't be entirely confident that he would at the moment what do you think Glenn you wouldn't think so he looks very strong very hard Foster and certainly this is a good plan he's got to push Pyatt as much as he possibly can and that's what he's doing and he's catching a lot of Pyatt punches as well Pyatt's find it difficult to get some balance because he's having to move so quickly backwards and then set himself for his own punches the pattern has been set from the word go here. And Pyatt is having to employ reverse gear just about continuously, and his ability to fight on the retreat is being tested fully. He hasn't looked bad doing it sometimes, but then Foster has spells like this where he starts to get through, and the gloves came down that time from Pyatt. Is Pyatt beginning to tire a bit? Is this pressure beginning to get to him? I think it might be. Because it looks as if it is. He's certainly looking tired, looking a little shaky at times. Although he's the one doing the cleaner work, it's taking an awful lot out of him to keep Foster at bay. The suspicion is that Foster is the one, and I thought this going in, is the one who wants this very, very badly, more probably. But are we doing Pyatt a disservice? Is he going to weather this and let his class do the talking? Foster saying in there, really, with his body language and his whole style and strategy, I'm never, oh, ever going seconds. to give you a split second's rest. So can you live with this? Well, that's what he's got to do. Now, As Clint East would say, well, can he? <laughs> Here we go, sixth round. Steve Foster in the black trunks, for those of you who uh, still want the identification. Chris Pyatt, the Commonwealth champion, in the white trunks. Two titles at stake here. I suppose the other question you have to ask about Foster at the age of 35 is, can he keep up this tempo? I think he probably can, you know. Yes, I Heads think coming close together. Sorry, I think he can. I think he lives the life. He's a real dedicated professional, but the heads are coming together again. John Coyle is an excellent referee. Never any doubt who's in charge in there when he's around.
a little bit untidy in this sixth round. But we'll excuse them that because it's been a very decent fight so far. You know, a couple of decent punches but just a slip in the corner there. Yeah. There's water in the corner, that was what caused that. It won't make him feel any better though. wondering at the moment here whether Foster's got a problem with his left hand he's not throwing it nearly so much in this round whether he's jarred it or something but uh, if you take that away from him you're taking away a lot because he's doing everything behind the jab as he walks in through it there so it can't be too bad I don't think it's broken or anything but uh, he has thrown it noticeably less just something to keep your eye on nothing more than that but he's just slowed up a little Foster and Pyatt just getting off with a few decent body punches. Good left hook to the body, mind you, from Foster. Again, Pyatt looking to hold, looking to, to turn his man, but just looking a little tired, Pyatt. Good stuff, that, from Pyatt. Just the suspicion in this round that he's the one throwing the cleaner punches but look at this body work now from Foster looking to slow and discourage Pyatt even further in this round though Pyatt has at least matched Foster's work rate if you just set his feet a little more and got good punches to the body second down. Pyatt ahead too, seventh round, despite Foster's constant walk forward aggression. He's done a lot of good crisp work on the counter, Pyatt. I think whatever the problem is with Foster's arm, it isn't anything too serious, as he's still using it. Yes, he's using it again a little more this round, so maybe you just need a little bit of massage on the arm, just jarred it a little bit as you can do when you overreach for a jab. This is the seventh round. Foster's just let the pace drop off a little bit in the last couple of rounds. Yes, I think he's starting to feel it himself. It had to happen, it was, he was pushing very hard in the early part of the fight. boys from the Phoenix camp in Manchester in the corner cheering Foster on as he tries to turn the screw again and switch up the heat good right uppercut there from Pine but through the defences of Foster oh good left hook from Foster got through with that This is developing into a really hard, grueling fight. Well, it's becoming a real test of wills here. You just wonder if one is starting, if one will go. Remembering they are both considerably on the wrong side of 30. and let go with punches but to be fair to Pyatt when he has had his back to the ropes he's nearly always been throwing some decent leather himself right hand got him but he slipped up that was only a slip there was a right hand just before that but it was only really a glancing blow and that was not why Pyatt went down and he slipped on some water in the corner I suspect yet again 
but he was just previous to that he was caught with a decent right hand which made him rush out of the way which caused the slip So the real battle of wills there now. Five rounds of action left in this if it goes the distance. Steve Foster's IBF Intercontinental Championship on the line as well as Pyatt's Commonwealth crown. Pyatt who had that great win over Sumbo Kalambe when he became world champion. It really was an excellent win. There's the scorecard of Glenn. Two rounds ahead, Pyatt at this stage. Whether the judges agree will be revealed later, perhaps. And Pyatt trying to use the combination there, but Foster's done a good job. He's covered up quite well. He's took a lot of punches on the gloves, and Pyatt's threw an awful lot. And a lot. It must have took a lot out of him landing on the arms and gloves of Foster. continuing to push Pyatt back just a little bit of a semi swelling underneath the left eye of Pyatt which has been coming up for a round or two but that was a good left hook there from Pyatt and I think Foster just was stung by that for a moment that's the danger for Foster as he comes in that he leaves himself open Just getting the, the, the cleaner punches this round. That's a good left hook again from Pyatt. Foster gets his gloves up well. Block those. I think Foster's looked a little more tired this round. The defences are just starting to slip. I are just getting through a cleaner shot. Is the storm beginning to subside? But there, Foster does get through. Pyatt soaks it up well, though. Well, this really is a good fight. Foster's shooting tremendous kicks there. He's just starting to get caught with the field and come up with a good flurry of his own. Just to remind Pyatt, he's still here. He still wants... The Commonwealth title. There's no such thing as a plan B for Foster. He will just keep on doing this all night, hoping he can get the breakthrough. But give Chris Pyatt a lot of credit. I must say, I thought he was beginning to look a bit unsteady on his legs two or three rounds ago, but he appears to have come through that phase. That's a good right hand to the body, that from Foster, though. Possible to predict this, isn't it? Yes, it really is. Foster's doing a good job of finishing the rounds quite strongly, just to catch the judges' eyes. Round nine. Ninth round. Just a greater crispness and accuracy at times about Pyatt who may feel with this being round nine that he's into the home straight at least but it's a pretty long home straight from here the fight has kept his pace quite well at times it did look as if he was just starting to, to tire but he's kept at the same pace and kept doing the same thing well throughout the fight. He's never really let Foster get on top of him. Yeah, that's right. We asked the question at the beginning, did he still have the hunger? How much was left in the tank, etc., etc. And he has answered those questions in the affirmative. He's shown great fighter's pride here, hasn't he? He has good strength and resilience and you know, he's kept to his job very well. Just a bit less from Foster in this round. Yes, and for the first time in the fight, Pyatt's starting to push forward. It's 
trying something a bit different now, Foster. Not walking in nearly so much. Maybe he feels that he's beginning to get caught rather too much with those shots on the way in. So yes, giving I think he's something else to think about. I think he, he, he maybe has come to the, the conclusion that he's playing in the Pirates' hands a little bit by going forward all the time. He thinks, well, let, let's see now what Pirates does at coming forward. So Pyatt accepts the invitation. Do you agree with that switch in strategy or was he doing well enough? Well, I think it's maybe time to try a change, whether it will work or not, and he's, he's yet to find out. But he was getting to the point where it was becoming a very similar pattern with maybe Pyatt just stealing the rounds with a better work. So I think it's a good idea to try something different from Foster. But it's a psychological triumph, I would suggest, for Pyatt that he's had to call off the offensive. Let's see. Pyatt's been around a long time. He will have sensed this little mood swing in the fight. It's Pyatt who's the one who's walking forward now. and right there from Foster just as Pyatt come forward so he's still got the speed Foster well nine minutes remaining in this fight which has two titles on the line he's almost had as much press up here as the Collins Ben fight that's the kind of interest there is in Steve Foster in these parts. This player who's seen it all before. British um, light middleweight champ, European light middleweight champ, Commonwealth light middleweight champ, WBC international middleweight champion, WBO middleweight champion. Quite an impressive list for Pyatt. And here he is trying to hang on to his Commonwealth crown and pick up... Uh, Foster's IBF Intercontinental title for good measure. Again, the head with this entire one, but just dropping forward with his head there. And Foster reverts to plan A. And they are getting tired now. So will those pressure tactics force a breakthrough? Pyatt's spirit has never been conquered at any time in this uh, assault. No, he's just kept to his work with Solomon. Again, Foster gets through with a good right hand, and then Pyatt returns to Conlon with a good right hand of his own. gloves, couple of them got through. Yes, I was going to say that the, he was throwing the punches that looked flashy, but there wasn't a great deal of them got through to the, the chin of Foster. He pulled his hands up quite well. Again, Foster pushing forward hard. But not doing an awful lot when he does, and again, by definitely got the old non-stick soles on those boots slips on the water in the corner no authentic knockdowns in the fight so far right up a cut on the counter from Pyatt Oops. handsome punch Oof. Hits came very, very dangerously close together there. John Cole not happy, and no wonder. Well, Pyatt's going down with the head. He's just, I think he's, he's trying to lift Foster's head up a little bit because Foster's coming in very low, but he's going about it the wrong way. 
getting rough in there at times. Foster just following that punch in with his shoulder. Some of the hooks being followed in a bit with the elbow too, for good measure, a la Tyson. Very, very hard fight for both of them. And it's getting late in it too. Two rounds gone. I wonder how the judges are seeing this. Uh, Roy Francis and Dave Paris of Great Britain, referee uh, judging along with Julio Bassi of Italy. There's Glenn's scorecard with Pyatt three ahead. But uh, I would emphasize here that a lot of these rounds have been close. And who knows how the judges are seeing it. It's uh, one of those fights, Glenn, where you couldn't have given people too serious an argument about the destiny of some of the rounds. That's right, you couldn't. Because uh, Foster's come forward very well. He's got his gloves up quite well also and he's having a good spell in the fight now he's just rocked Pyatt back good right hand from Foster damaging looking punch Pyatt remember has been on the floor in both of his most recent fights not tonight as yet though the pro Foster crowd in Manchester trying to urge their man home giving him a lift but Pyatt Meets fire with fire. Pyatt really having to grit his teeth there to keep Foster back. Just to draw up the energy to keep throwing punches. Both of them will need a long rest after this one. It's been hard. really a question here of what do you like best Foster's walk forward pressure or Pyatt's classy combination punching on the retreat different people see different fights again Pyatt throwing punches but Foster doing well to catch them on the gloves there and then land with a couple of his own Both of them are very tired now, their movement's more laboured. In this 11th round. Last half a minute of the 11th round. The Foster corner right beside us trying to urge their man, put more in, put more in. I suppose if he was an answer, he would say, well, what do you think I'm doing? <laughs> He seems to be, he seems to be the stronger in this round, he's pushing Pyatt back. He knows it's, it's near the end of the fight, he's really going for it. Into the last round, it could well depend this on the last three minutes. Might not, but the feeling here, look at that, what a, after all that. Now, as I said before, Boxing has its critics, but after a fight like this, the two of them embrace. <laughs> and it'll be the last embrace they have for <laughs> three right. minutes, I tell you. Embrace and then heads down and talk to talk. That was two old pros with mutual respect for each other. That's right. I mean, these are two nice guys as well out yeah. of the ring. They're good professionals. They know it's all business in there. Absolutely. Steve Foster at 35, Chris Pyatt at 33, and good punches from Foster, who's finishing pretty strong here. Is he doing enough to nick it? A good right hand as well, sent the sweat spraying from Pyatt's head. Pyatt just fading a little, close home. A good shot from Foster on the way in. This is really leaping in with that jab. Again, the right hand pushes Pied on the back foot. I just can't get any good work in this last round. Now he tries to. 
I think he knows he's got to claw back the events of the first minute or so of the round, Pyatt. This is Foster's final round in a pretty big way so far. Probably as emphatic a round as he's had all through the contest. He's already done enough. It might be a dangerous assumption. Well, I think Payad knows he's been in a tough fight. He's shouting at Foster beside me. You've got a minute. And he's finishing in this the final round very well, Foster. Pushing hard. Just taking the eye. That's a good jab again. Again. Hyatt's leg just seemed to stiffen for a moment. I don't know whether he's very, very tired, but things like that have been happening here and there throughout the contest, but he just gets on with it. The Foster crowd and their Viking helmets trying to roar their man on. And he's definitely had the better of this last round with only 20 seconds remaining in it. But is it enough? The three judges will decide. Can I just keep him out of the way, using the angles, and then tying him up for a good fight? They both raise their arms a lot. They both think they've got it. Jimmy Tibbs lifts up Chris Pyatt. Foster had his arms a lot as well. And we await the scorecards. What is your say, Glenn? Francis Payet has just nicked it by the one round. In a, a tremendous fight. And my scorecard comes out scoring it round by round, dead level. There's Glenn's scorecard. Payet by a round. We shall see. It's too close to call, this one. The contest has gone to the judges' scorecards, and we have a unanimous decision. Judge Batty scores the contest 116 to 112. Judge Roy Francis scores the contest 117 to 114. Judge Dave Harris scores the contest 116 to 100. has got it and those fans who looked a little bit despondent a moment or two ago are now celebrating it's a home win for Manchester Foster getting it by three rounds three rounds and four rounds must they were a bit surprised by that thought it was a very very close call but all three judges giving it fairly emphatically to Steve Foster what a triumph it is for him he's now the Commonwealth champion as well as the IBF Intercontinental champion and he'll want a world title opportunity next. I really want a world title fight now. A domestic fight doesn't interest me now. It really doesn't. I want a world title shot. I, like I say, I know my level. I know I'm not a pretty fighter. But I've got the guts in the bottle and the heart, and I'll go in with anybody. And it's two titles and counting for Steve Foster. Chris Pyatt, incidentally, not very happy with the decision, swept out of the arena without talking to anybody, leaving the floor clear for Jim Watt and Barry McGuigan. Briefly, your thoughts on that performance? Jim? Well, the skill is nice, but uh, determination and uh, sheer will to win are essential, and uh, Stevie Foster's dedication and will to win overcame Pyatt's skill tonight. He's a double champion. Full credit to him. Congratulations, and I hope he goes on from there. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful, Barry, at the age of 35, if somewhere there was a very big money fight out there for Foster. I, th I really think the guy deserves it. He performed brilliantly. 35 years old and the performance tonight was, was remarkable. He thoroughly deserved the fight but I did think it was much closer than that and Pyatt had a reason to complain but I think that uh, the guy deserves a world title fight. I hope Warren can arrange it for him. Let me just apologise if you're waiting for the World Speedway Championship coverage. It follows at the conclusion of the boxing in just a few minutes time. One or two loose ends to tie up before we leave you here. Herbie Hyde in action on the comeback trail after losing his WBO World Heavyweight title 16 months ago to Riddick Bowe. Hyde returned to action tonight against Michael Murray. We'll just show you what happened in the sixth round. I just want to point out that Murray has been down before this. 
Seconds out, round six. Stier. He's into the sixth there with Herbie Hyde. Hyde in white from Norwich. Again, Hyde looking for that uppercut. Well, Murray looks as if he's come out in this round and has decided that go hung a gung ho tactics are necessary here. <laughs> well, I'm sure the corner stand isn't Hyde's. He's looking a little bit tired, looking a little bit heavy. Now's the chance. You may have just have done a bit too much. Now's the chance to go out and try and do something yourself. Certainly, Murray hasn't done very much up till now. Breathing heavily, Hyde. Finding it a hard night's work. He can be excused that, mind you. In horse racing terms, he's going to be better for the outing here, you would hope. Yes, Murray just got through with a, a little right hand, and I think this is the best tactics for Murray. Try and push Hyde back against the ropes and try and land his own clubbing punches. to hold on for a moment but there was a little danger signal flashing that Murray may still be competitive in this fight even though he's a mile behind on points yes and that was certainly better he had a bit of success there were two decent right hands in Murray that'll give him a little bit of confidence it's only put a, a, a few doubts in Hyde's mind because he is looking a little tired at this point Oh, there's a right uppercut again from Hyde. He just stung Murray with that one. Sensed it too, and that's why he's trying to come on strong again here now. Left hand gets through too, and a right, and another one, and down goes Murray again. It was just the accumulative effect of those punches. Up at eight, Murray's been down twice now. May not go on. Very close decision there by Tony Green. Thought about stopping it. Gave Murray the benefit of the doubt. May not have done him a favor. Well, I have finally unleashed the punches though. We're good and he looks hurt. He looks looking oh. for a place to get out now. He doesn't want to go on. And even if I think he gets up here, he's hurt his side. I think he's hurt his arm. The bell's gone in the middle of all that. I think the fight would certainly have been stopped at that moment because that's it. They've, they've called it off. The corner have called it off. Murray's not going on any further. And Herbie Hyde is back with the victory he would have expected here. He beat Murray before. He's beaten him again. And although he looked pretty tired and only showed his best in flashes there, that was understandable after so long out of the ring. It looks like a big rebuilding job for Herbie Hyde on the brief evidence yeah, there Jim go what do you think back to anything like his peak the finishing punches were nice they were accurate well delivered but they're a long way to go I don't think Herbie will be too happy with that performance Barry yeah uh, Slug is lethargic and a bit heavy-handed is heavier but uh, you can you can you can uh, understand that been out for two years he, he wouldn't be as sharp but uh, he has a long way to go and there's a long building process before he gets to fight for a world title again that's for sure and even in domestic terms in British terms the heavyweight picture has changed around quite a lot while Herbie Hyde has been away. Another title found a new owner before we leave you tonight and a very important step forward in the career of the young man Mark Prince from Tottenham, the light heavyweight prospect. He stopped Morris Corr in the seventh round of their fight for the vacant WBO intercontinental light heavyweight title tonight. Prince's 14th straight win. He's learning all the time but for Corr who's been trying to rebuild his career a big setback after losing a European title fight back at the end of 1994. So well done to Prince tonight. That was all in the build-up to the main event and a rather unsatisfactory conclusion all round as Steve Collins defended his WBO World Super Middleweight title against Nigel Benn here tonight. The uh, fight was really just beginning to build up into a classic, it, even a classic was on the cards really, when Benn went down in the fourth round and uh, twisted his ankle or appeared to sustain some ankle damage and quickly indicated to the referee that he couldn't go on. An unsatisfactory end for both fighters. 
Collins retains his world crown, but the questions remain unanswered. And maybe Steve Collins will feel that there is even more uh, in the tank from him as well.